You want a career in digital forensics, but you got a lot of choices. College degree or study toward a certification? And if a certification, which one will take you on the path you want? Amber Schroeder, CEO of Paraben, breaks down digital forensic certifications, what doors they can open for you, where to get started, and which upper-level certs you should work towards so you'll be prepared for the job you want. Now, that's what I call a cyberwork hack. Welcome to a new series of short videos from InfoSec. The purpose is to give you quick, clear, and actionable answers to the questions that you have about learning cybersecurity. Uh, today's guest is InfoSec Skills author and Paraben founder and CEO, Amber Schroeder. Uh, I love talking with Amber. Uh, her episodes on the Cyberwork podcast about digital forensics are some of our very most popular episodes. So go check those out. Uh, and uh, so today we're going to get you a little quick hit. Amber's going to talk to you about digital forensic certifications versus college degrees and the pros and cons of different ways of learning digital forensics. Welcome, Amber. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, Amber, can you give us a brief overview of the different methods of learning and proving knowledge regarding the work of digital forensics? What are some of the primary certifications and how does studying for them compare with, say, getting a college degree in the same topic? It's kind of a big area because originally when this field emerged, there were no college degrees. It was definitely yes. all about a skills path, which is still, I think, what the field is about. It's about a skills path. Mm -hmm. Although many of you studying it in college, that is a benefit. I think it's a good foundation. You can't go anywhere without the skills. So when you see things like the CCFE and the CMFE, uh, those type of offerings, they're really going to give you that hands on that is going to get you hired. You know, yes. it's always great to have theory. I, I right. absolutely believe to understand it, but you got to have something, you know, don't just tell me how to screw in a light and a light bulb. It's yeah. like, show me you can do it. That's yes. what we want to see. Put it put it in your hand and, and go over there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, hiring managers see any difference on a resume between someone who's learned digital forensics as a college course versus those who complete a certification? Because I know certainly with like things like computer science or, or something, there's a different feel to I spent four years on computer science versus I spent, you know, I, I got a, yeah. a CISSP. Is there a similar uh, sort of preference for one or the other still in the job world? I think there's still a hard time with hiring managers versus like someone who's actually the skilled person in the field. Okay. They look at it and say, oh, they've done these certifications. I know they had to do labs. I know they had this process versus a hiring manager is going to look at it and go, oh, look, they have a college degree in this. They must understand it. Mm -hmm. I think that there's got to be a balance where the hiring managers start talking to the practitioners to really understand kind of, I, it sounds silly. I actually put a point value when have, I have people apply for a job. Mm. This is, oh, you've got this. That's worth five points. I don't know. Right. I'm gaming I'm gamif gamifying my own hiring process because it's so hard to find the right people that make right. that fit. So it's a balance in between them. I do know some schools are starting to get a little more practical lab experience, mm. but um, I think a lot of people entering this field should be expected that they're going to have to do a lab to get hired. Kind of like when you do a programming test, all of my programmers, they have to go through a programming test to get hired right. in the first place. I think the same thing is going to happen with this. Okay. That's, in, that's interesting to know that, uh, that uh, sort of the college version is, is kind of behind the curve in terms of, of learning, or at least was up until recently. Yeah, they're getting a little better where they're realizing that the kids have to have hard skills to be able to enter the workforce. Got it. Uh, so, you know, everyone has to start with the basic uh, learning or basic search to get started. Uh, can you talk about some of the uh, pathways? Uh, like what, what are, first of all, what are the, the, the main digital forensic certs? And then from there, where do you kind of like fork off into sort of like advanced level things? Can you, yeah, uh, I think you always get a foundational one. So you'll get that from BSCRS from organizations like I, IASIS, which is a nonprofit organization, but they only run the course one time a year. Mm. So you kind of have to balance it out with going some of the online courses so that you can enter the field at any time of the year. And there's some great ones that InfoSec offers. There's mm -hmm. other ones that are out there in the industry. Either one of those are giving you that foundational uh, information you need. And after that, digital forensics really goes into specialties. So I'm going to mm. study, you know, um, email. I'm going to go into computers. I'm going to go into Internet artifacts, the registry, or I'm going to go into smartphones, um, IoT, drones. All of those things happen. And those have entirely different courses of study. 
Wow. So it's, it's great that there's so many unique things you can choose because you cannot be a master of all. It is terribly difficult. My brain actually fills up and I cannot get another drive in there. I tried, yeah. it just doesn't happen. Yeah. 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 Now, so are, is there a related cert, uh, for each of those subspecialties or yeah. Yeah. There's a related yeah. cert for every single one of them done wow. by different organizations, done by vendors in the field that make the technology. Cause again, mm -hmm. you've got to get that certification that says I can offer, I can operate this drill that is allowing me to do this, this function within the process. So it's the same with the tools. I got to get certified that I can run yeah. those tools properly. So is there, uh, I mean, obviously, like you said, it's, it's very important as you go higher up to specialize, but um, like at what point in your career would you move from, uh, you know, getting very good at being a generalist to sort of finding your your niche and then locking into that. Is that something where if you're in a certain type of job, then they say, we really want you to be the email person on our team, then you would go and get that certification or or what do you, how, how does that I usually work? It, you're going to laugh. It kind of depends a little bit on your age. If I were just hmm. starting this out and I was graduating from college at a normal time and in my mid twenties, you know, I might work my way through different specialties to get that chance to get that you know, taste of them and say, oh, I really like this. I want to do this for the rest of my life versus mm -hmm. someone who might be on a second career. Hey, I had one. I now want to explore cyber. I want to look at digital forensics. Yep. That's when it's time to kind of hone those skills into a specialty because I think you'll mm -hmm. get hired a little quicker as someone who might be at a different level or age of their career. Got it. Okay. Uh, so uh, in con conjunction with certifications or academic studies, we mentioned, what are some uh, hands-on projects or experiences, not just labs within like a certification, but like actual field experience that students should be trying to accomplish to let potential employer knows uh, that they're not just an on-paper candidate? So I think a lot of people don't think of this, but it's about doing a research project and going out and speaking on it, which I know you're like, mm. a lot of people just starting, they're like, I don't want to submit to a conference. You've got to, because you've got to show yeah. not only can you complete the research, but you can present it. Because a lot of the field is about presenting the facts of what you've done. That's all digital forensics is. It's really about researching into a problem, finding out what that solution is, and then giving those results to someone else. Presenting at events is a big part of it. And I think a lot of people are intimidated by it and they shouldn't be. They should mm -hmm. absolutely submit or they should write some blogs and ask to have them published in different sites. Absolutely. I know I'm always looking for great content because it's hard to keep them up all the time. So yeah. putting yourself out there, I think it makes a huge difference. Show that you know how to find the answers to something. That's really what digital forensics is all about. All right. So uh, you uh, you touched on this a little bit before, but I want to get uh, very specific. If you were getting started, Amber, in digital forensics today, uh, what learning path or combination of specialties or generalizations would you take, especially if, like, as, as you said, you are at the start of your career, um, where, where would you sort of see the future going and, and what would you sort of focus on? If it were me, because of the way that I learn, because um, I am learning disabled, so I'm dyslexic anyway. So I, I take a little longer to get through materials. I would take some of the great online classes that I've seen uh, many times with InfoSec. It's not a, not a push for you, but you guys put out great content. And I, mm -hmm. I love the fact that I can then watch it, apply it, and then watch it again if I have to. So I love that aspect of it. And then I would probably go to the b -Skurs class, something that IASIS offers, because mm -hmm. that's going to give me some fundamental file system stuff. And it's going to see how I interact with a coach. That's the one thing I mm -hmm. like about their program is they give you a coach through the process, which I think okay. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm going to decide, do I want to keep going or am I out? And yes. hopefully you find a passion in that moment between those two experiences, you're going to find whether or not you love it. Oh, that was awesome. I, I love that answer. So uh, for, for listeners who are uh, excited uh, by Amber's uh, suggestions here and are eager to get back to their studies or even uh, get get into digital forensics, uh, you can find Amber Schroeder on the InfoSec Skills platform. Uh, just look for our digital forensics department and you will find uh, Amber's work all over there. So Amber Schroeder, thank you so much for taking time to, time with me today. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank all of you for watching this episode. So check back each week or subscribe to our channel for more quick takes and action items from InfoSec. Until then, we'll see you soon. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.